record this lesson. So what we are going to learn, two, three things we are going to learn. First of all, what would be the slope of a line? After that, we are going to learn what is the distance between two coordinates, right? I'm making two points here, okay? Uh, see here, here is a point. Suppose I'm making two points. One is this point and another point is this point. Okay, these are two points you already know about Cartesian plane, this coordinate plane, right? This is called x-axis. This is called y-axis, right? So mm -hmm. tell me what is the coordinate of this? The of coordinate. Where? Mm -hmm. Of where? A, this this point, point number okay. A. Yeah. Um, negative 7, 1. Mm -hmm. Negative 7 and 1, right. In same manner, what would be the coordinate of point number B? For B, negative 1, 4. Negative 1 and 4. Right. Now, what we need to do, we need to find how much unit is the distance between point number A and point number B. Right. So, this is the first thing which we would be learning. That is called the distance formula. How we can find the distance? using distance formula. First of all, in first coordinate, this is x1, this is y1, okay? And in second coordinate, this can be considered as x2 and y2. You got my point, no doubt, right? Now we are going to use a formula. The formula is root over, we are going to write x2 minus x1 whole square and we are going to write plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Got my point, right? And now we are going to plug in this formula. So tell me what is my x2? Mm, negative 7, 1. Mm -hmm. X2 means x of the second coordinate which you have written, the second point. Negative 1. Yeah, so you are going to write negative 1 and formula is x2 minus x1. So x2 minus and what, what you will write? What is your x1? x1 is? Uh, negative 7. Right. So uh, what... like how do you know if it's x1 or x2? So you take any, any one, x1 and x2, you will get the same answer. There would be no problem at all. If so I will any, take... Anything? Yeah if, can be? yeah, if I will take this one as x1 and this one as x2, then also the answer would be same. So there is no problem at all. So any okay. coordinate can be x1 and y1. Uh -huh. Okay. So here what you are going to do, here is a negative sign from before as well, right? So I'm going to write negative 1, there is a negative, and then again I'm going to write negative 7, right? That is important like this. And the whole thing is there is a square. Then again, I would be writing a plus. What is my y2? Mm, y2 is negative 4. And what is my y1? So y2 minus y1. Y1 is? Mm. 1, right? Yeah. Whole square. Now let us calculate this easy. So negative 1 I'm going to write and here I'm going to write negative and negative will make a positive. So positive 7 whole square plus I'm going to write 4 minus 3. 4 sorry sorry 4 minus 1 will make 3 3 whole square. Got my point? And here I'm going to solve negative 1 and plus 7. What this will make? Negative, yeah, negative 1 and plus 7 will make 6, right? Yeah. And 6 square will make 36. Here, mm -hmm. 3 square will make 9, right? So, 36 plus 9, that would be 45, right? And that would be my answer. 45 is not a perfect square. So, no need to solve that. That is the answer. Got my point? So, yep. you just need so to learn. Can I write the formula down? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. The formula is 
x2 minus x1 first of all you have to take x2 then x1 then you have to put a whole square then you have to write y2 minus y1 then a whole square like that okay so this is called distance formula yeah done yep i wrote it okay okay now the next thing what we are going to learn is how to find um uh, the midpoint right now you tell me where would be the midpoint of line a b means what would be like a kind of approx midpoint of line a and b the segment which i have drawn mm, what do you mean midpoint means the middle of a and oh. b like that segment that is called midpoint a kind of middle in between isn't it somewhere here it would be right yeah what my point now we can't you find it by like finding the distance and dividing it by like a half something yeah so that is what i'm going to tell you right but not finding the distance we are going to do something else so this would be midpoint right i'm representing it by m now how we can know the midpoint the coordinate of midpoint right how we can know the coordinate of midpoint because this is the distance if you will divide it by 2 then you would be getting that what would be distance of am and what would be distance of bm right you would be getting distance what if i need to find the coordinate of the midpoint right then what i'm going to do for that we are going to use a simple formula that is called a midpoint formula that is a midpoint formula so if midpoint is x and y then how we are going to find x and y midpoint formula so we would be finding x using x1 plus x2 we are just going to find the average for x axis so x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y is equal to y1 plus y2 divided by 2 that would be my answer got my point so tell me what is my x1 mm. negative 7 right so the x x1 is negative 7 x2 is and, and plus a negative one negative so one. that will make negative at the end right positive and negative makes a negative so i'm simply writing a negative divided by 2 okay if i'm going to solve this i'm going to get negative 4 right what my yeah. point because negative 7 and negative 1 will make negative 8 negative 8 divided by 2 will, will will make negative 4 in same manner i'm going to write y1 plus y2 so my y1 is 1 and my y2 is 4 right divided by 2 that will make 2.5 got my point so mm -hmm. what is my x my x is negative 4 and my y is 2.5 so what is the midpoint the midpoint is negative 4 and 2.5. And see, if I'm making that point negative 4 and 2.5, see this, this would be exactly the midpoint, right? Which I'm trying to represent. And I'm going to write 2.5. Isn't it? This is the midpoint in the middle, right? Yep. Oh, okay. So my guess was correct. It was somewhere where I have pointed. So got my point? So this is how we are finding the midpoint. Finding For finding right. midpoint... We are, we are just finding the average of x and average of y. That means x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, and we will get our answer. Wait, can I um, write? I'm hmm. going to write a formula. Sure, sure. This is an important formula, so you can write that. Okay, and it's a pretty long one, so. But, but they are easy. They are logical. They are easy yeah. as well to remember. I can understand them, mm -hmm. but like you know, I just want to write it just in case I forget. Yeah, yeah, because, that's true. Uh, that's true. Sorry. Um, yes, okay, okay. It's all right. You can take your time. Yeah, because I want to like write it. Mm -hmm. Because what if I forget, I can't. For simpler formulas, I'll just search it up what the formula mm -hmm. was. I will use it. Mm -hmm. But like, things are super long. Yeah, that's true. So you can write in your maths notebook. Just in case I forget. Yeah, that's true. So, 
you know usually we can make a note of everything like in maths we can make the note of formulas so that we can revisit them we can understand them yeah, again i'm kind of practicing now yeah true for seventh grade uh, seventh grade is not tough at all it is easy so this is one of the topic of grade seventh only slope distance formula oh. then midpoint formula this is grade seventh topic only i see okay okay done uh no not yet okay okay no problem okay i'm almost done just you know okay no problem so now what we are going to do we are going to learn how to find the slope of a line okay so first of all let me tell you so now can i rub this uh, i'm almost oh. done i just have to okay write. okay no problem no problem mm. okay yeah I'm okay done. so let us start okay so now what we are going to do we are going to make a line and we are going to find the slope of it but but before telling you the slope let us understand what is slope slope is basically you know the inclination the gradient the steepness you know about that right how mm -hmm. easy it would be to walk okay can you can you walk on y axis is it possible to walk on y axis isn't it the y axis is like the wall uh yeah you can you can fly right means you can't walk on the y axis until and unless you are not a ninja right Mm -hmm. So, what would be the slope of y-axis? The slope of y-axis would be undefined, right? Yeah. The steepness, the gradient, the slope is known by a different name in physics. When you study physics in the future, the slope I'm formula kind of is... Just what a slope is. Slope is, suppose this is a kind of a road, okay? So, this steepness, this inclination, so this in in inclined thing is the slope right for example if I'm, I'm making a line so this is the slope of the line this one are you understanding right how tough or how easy it is to work on this suppose this is a road how tough or how easy it would be to walk that is a kind of slope right got my point oh like the like inclination, the inclination. Yeah, inclination, yes. Right. So that is known by different name. Inclination, stiffness, gradient, slope. Slope is the common language which we are using for mathematics in grade 7th. But when you will go in like grade 8th or 9th and in grade 11th, basically was studying physics in California, in Mountain House. So... There you will learn that slope is called gradient, stiffness. These are important, right? So what would be slope of y-axis? Slope of y-axis is undefined. We, we do not know what is the slope of y-axis because we cannot work on y-axis. So we do not know what is the slope of it. Understood my point? So if somebody will ask what would be the slope of y-axis, that would be undefined. So no doubt important point and what would be the slope of x-axis is it is it easy to work on x-axis or tough to work on x-axis i think it would be easy so what is slope is mm -hmm. there any inclination of x-axis or any no. so what would be the slope of x-axis that is equal to zero yeah correct right so x-axis is my floor where I'm walking. You know, floor have a bit of inclination so that water can go from one side to another side whenever we are mopping the floor, etc. So that is made in such a, uh, you know, way that there is a kind of inclination in our floor, in our houses, right? But x-axis literally have no slope at all. So you can compare x-axis with floor, with a flat road where you can easily walk, right? And y-axis is like your wall. You cannot walk there. So slope of y-axis is undefined. Got my point? Mm -hmm. Now, how we are finding the slope? That is the second thing. 
So let me go to the slide. Let me tell you from the slide itself. So there are two ways to find the slope. Mm -hmm. So distance formula I have already told you. So how we are finding the slope? We are writing if the distances are given to us. Here the distance is given to us, right? The distance of y and distance of x, isn't it? The distance of height and this one. So this height is called rise. Height is called rise. And this horizontal distance is called a run. What that is called? Run. So if oh, rise I and... Hear you. Hello? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am, I, am I audible? Hello? Uh, I don't... It's talking hello? Here. Hello? Um... Now, now am I audible? Oh, oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, okay, okay. So here so what I, I was... I didn't hear what you said for like the last one minute. Okay, okay, okay. No problem at all. So here I told if the distance is given to you, right? Like if the distance is given in meter, the distance is given in feet. So how you can find the slope? Okay, if suppose you need to find the slope of this roof or you have to find the slope of this staircase or you have to find the slope of what this is called handrail okay if you have to find the slope of this trade mill what you are going to do right so if the distances are given then what we are going to do is we are going to see the y-axis we are going to see the height you got my point the vertical height the vertical height is called rise the vertical height is called rise and the horizontal distance is called run Got my point, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So rise over run. So what is the formula for slope? If the distance is given to you, that is rise over run. So this is how you are going to find the slope. And you are representing slope by letter called M, right? M is the sign for slope. Okay, like D for distance, S for speed, T for time. In same manner, M for slope, right? So rise over run is my formula for slope when the distance is given to us, right? So tell me what would be the slope of this? Slope of roof would be? So now you can find using your pen tap. In fraction, you can find if you wish. Wait, what is the um horizontal height called? Run. Run? Run, yeah. The horizontal height is called? No, oh, because you're cursive. I can't read cursive. So it's like W to me. I don't know. No, no, no. Run. This is R-U-N. Run. See, I'm writing in like bold letters. Okay. So the first one is rise. Over. Run. Okay. So the formula rise. Rise means the vertical distance. The vertical distance going like that. And run is the horizontal distance, right? And done. So now you find the answer for 7, number 8. Okay. Hey, what is M? M is the sign for slope. You know, like as you are representing T like a shortcut, isn't it? T is for time, S is for speed, D is for distance. In same manner, M is the symbol for slope. So you may use the symbol. If you write M is equal to something that is inherently understood, implicitly understood that you are referring to slope. M is the symbol for slope. Right. Okay. So instead of that symbol, you can simply write slope. It's all right. No problem at all. Okay. So determine the slope of the roof. Mm hmm so slope, if they're asking to find, they're asking to find the slope of this one, right? This is inclined. So first of all, you will see that what is rise here. So what is rise? So that's the vertical height. Yeah. So rises. Mm, the rise is like eight. Yeah, correct. So if you want to find the slope of it, then you are going to write rise is 8. And what is a run? The run is um 24. Correct. So if you will simplify this, you will get 1 upon 3, right? 
8 3 is a 24 8 times 3 is 24 done so that is my answer so basically we are not writing the slope in decimal if you will write in decimal then also that not be wrong okay that is also correct but generally we don't write like that so what would be the answer for second one sis so the rise is mm -hmm. 10 mm -hmm. the run is 18 correct and what would be the simplified answer for this if we will simplify this fraction by 2 we can divide both the numbers right so that's 5 and 9 exactly and... yeah so that is my answer wait wait i have a question mm -hmm. um so when you determine the slope or something mm -hmm. i realize that like it's the the height measures like the the lowest point to like the highest point you know the slope is like between any two points the slope would be same for a line the slope is same if this is if you take any two point and if you will calculate the slope the slope would be same in the case of a line if you are taking this highest point and lowest point or any two point of that the slope would be same in a line you got my point yep okay, slope. Can I get something? yeah yeah sure sure no problem Okay. Okay. So the next question is this one. Okay. So calculate the slope of the handrail. Mm -hmm. So the so rise is? The handrail is three. Mm -hmm. the, the rise is three. Mm -hmm. And then the run is 5.5 .5. exactly correct right now i don't think so we can simplify this so let it be as it is and now what would be the slope of this treadmill so the rise is one mm -hmm. the run is eight so one upon eight right so this is how we are finding the slope Wait, do you have to show it in like a decimal or do you have to show it in a fraction in fraction, mostly we are writing. We we do not represent in decimal when we are writing the slope. But if you write in decimal also, that would not be wrong. Right. But mostly we are writing in fraction. Yeah, but it might make some like, if you put in a computer, it might make the computer confused or something. Yeah. So if in your quizzes, they are asking in decimal, you can write in decimal. No problem at all. Okay. So here what we are going to do, we are going to learn the next thing. Here the distances were given, right? In feet, in meter, right? If the distances are given, the rise is given, the run is given, how we can find the slope, right? Now let us consider the second case. If distance is not given to us, if coordinates are given to us, right? If a line is given to us and the coordinates of the line are given to us, then how we are going to find the slope, okay? Let us try to understand so I'm taking a line, right? And I'm making a line here, starting from here and making like this. Oh my God, it's tough to stop at one very perfect place. Yeah. Okay. Can't you just, oh, okay. Okay, so I could just type in like the angle you need to put in. Yeah, that is a better idea. Wait, let me type like that. So actually, I will be writing an equation, right? Y is equal to mx plus 3. I'll teach you what this is. Y is equal to mx plus 3. That is the equation of a line, right? So I would be writing like 2x and plus 3. Then I would be getting a line, okay? Plus 3, then it will shift 3 places. Or if I'll write 4, it will shift 4 places. Plus 3, it has shifted. If I'm, I'm writing 4, then it has shifted like that. You got my point, no doubt? Now, yep. what if this line is given, how I can find the slope of it? So for finding the slope mm -hmm. of a line, you can take any two coordinate, any two coordinate answer would be same. First of all, how we are finding the slope? If the coordinates are given, the formula is rise over run, right? So isn't it Y? So rise is like the Y axis. Yes or no? 
rise means the vertical height right and run is the horizontal height isn't it that is the x axis so how you are finding the height of y axis y axis can be find as y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 and x axis can be find as x2 minus x1 hello am i audible yeah okay so you got my point how we are going to find the slope this is how we are going to find the slope okay y2 minus y1 uh, and wait, y2, y2 yeah. minus y1 uh, what is what is yeah y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 got my why point are writing that? why why we are writing that like if, like for hmm. we already have rise divided by run why do we need this extra formula? yeah correct 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 your answer is correct see here you are you are saying that rise is given to us rise is what rise is four right mm -hmm. rise of this line if you will see right that is four and what is run run is 2 we will not take negative 2 because distance is not in negative right 2 unit yeah. so what would be the slope slope would be 2 isn't it this is what you are trying to say right yeah but what if it would not be given to us suppose two coordinates are just given to us and then they are asking that what would be the slope if the coordinates are given then how we are going to find the slope for example suppose this coordinate would be given to you Okay, one this coordinate would be given and one this coordinate would be given. So you can take any two coordinate and you can find the slope, isn't it? You got my point? So let us yeah. take this coordinate. This is as A and this is as B. Okay, so what is coordinate number A? Mm, coordinate number A, A is 4, negative 4. And? and negative four. 4 and negative 4, right? And B would be? Negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 and negative 2. What if these are given? What if they have just given? Okay, there is a line and whose two coordinates are A, 4 minus and minus 4 and minus 4 and uh, negative 3 and negative 2 find the slope of this line. And nothing is given to us. Just in a blank sheet, they have given this information. Then how we can know that what is my rise, why, oh, so what is my run. So this is the formula what we are going to use. Got my point why you, uh, this formula is being used, right? If something like this is given to you. So you can take any as x1, any as y1, okay? I'm taking this one as x1 and y1. And this is x2 and y2. Now what is the formula? x2 minus x1. So what is my x1? Tell me. Sorry, what is my y2? The y2 mm -hmm. is negative 3. Negative 2, isn't it? Negative 3? No, no, this one is y2, isn't it? This, oh, this y, sorry, I thought you were talking about x2, sorry. No, 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 y2 minus y1, right? So, y2 minus y1. So, what is my y1? y2 minus and then we have to write y1. So what is my y1? Um, y1 would be negative, uh, four. negative 4. Right, done. Okay, now x2 minus x1. What is my x2? x2 is negative 3. Negative 3 and what is my x1? So then minus yeah, x1 is? x1 is negative 4. Got my point. Now let us solve this. Negative 2. Negative and negative will make a positive. So positive 4 divided by negative 3. Positive 4. Right. Okay, 4 minus 2 will make 2. 4 minus 3 will make 1. What is my answer? 2. Isn't it I am getting the same answer? Right? Yeah. Here the rise was 4 and run was 2. We are not taking negative because distance is not in negative. So as you told, okay, here rise is given, run is given. Why you are doing this? Suppose rise and run will not be known to you. Then what you would be doing? Then we would be using this formula if only the coordinates are given to us. So got my point? Yeah. 
so this is how we are using this okay now as i told you we can take any two point if we will take any two point then again we will get the same answer so slope of a line is constant if you will find on this two point answer would be two if i will take this point and if I will take this point, again, the answer would be 2 only. So let us calculate. Suppose this is point C. Suppose this is point D. You try to calculate by your pent up. See, are you, are you getting the answer, same, same answer or not? So here, from here, we will come to know that the answer for the slope would be exactly same every time. Any two wow. coordinate if you are taking. Any two coordinate has the same slope. Yeah, In on a, yeah, any any two coordinate have same slope on the same line. On the same okay. line is important. Okay. If you will take different line, then answer will yeah. be different. Okay, so now you calculate for C and D, you will get the same answer. Take any coordinate on this line, any two coordinate, any combination on this line, answer would be same. That yeah, means yeah, so Even you like this one mm -hmm. and this one. Which two coordinates you have taken? Whatever these two are. C, no, so basically C, any C two are D. same. So yeah. these ones are the same. Yeah, the slope would be same if you will calculate yeah, using y2. Yeah, y2 minus y1. I, I was confused that you were saying like any any two coordinate on any line would be same no 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 i'm saying the slope of any two coordinate given on the same line would be same the value of slope would be same isn't it right if i'm taking oh, this also, point i want to ask a question really about lesson mm -hmm. but um if you take infinity mm -hmm. and you divide it by infinity mm -hmm. like People would say maybe like uh maybe one. Mm -hmm. No, one will not be the answer. Yeah. No, it's not one exactly. People might say it's one because but the thing is mm -hmm. infinite amount. Mm -hmm. If you divide infinite amount by infinite amount, it's just gonna be infinite. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Because it's not gonna end itself. Yeah, that's what true. You, um Infinity minus infinity, would that be zero? Or no, would that, be that would be also infinity. Or but if you are subtracting. No, no, but infinity and infinity are the same exact thing. So if you remove an, an infinite amount from an infinite amount. Mm -hmm. but, but, so actually, just... but, but actually we don't know that what is infinite, isn't it? So we cannot predict that that will become a zero. So infinity minus infinity, infinity plus infinity. So basically, infinity is just immortal. Like literally nothing can happen to it. Yeah. No matter how much you subtract from it. Yeah. Or how much you do exactly, anything. Exactly, exactly. No matter what you do to it, it's just infinity. Yeah, correct. In maths, we have to study this concept. I think in grade 8 in algebra 2, we have to find the end behavior of the functions. And so when we after, are... mm -hmm. after learning like stuff like if a number is subtracted by the same number, zero and all that stuff, it's kind of hard to imagine. Infinity. Yeah, that's true. But with infinity, the cases are different, right? So now you take coordinate C and D and now you try to find the okay. slope. But didn't you say it will be the same slope? Yeah, exactly. But that you need to see, isn't it? That are you getting the same answer or not? And you have to practice but also. But I already know it's going to be the same answer. So what's the point of doing it if I already know the answer? Yeah, but I just want to see that. Uh, are you are you solving that means correctly or not? Are you plugging I... in the formula correct or not? It's going to be two though. Yeah, uh, at the so... end, the answer would be two. Weak. So coordinate so C is equal to it can be negative one and two. Negative one and negative two. And so what would be, be D? Zero and four. Zero and four. Okay, now you use this formula y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. You can take any one as x1 and y1 
but you can if you are taking x1 then you should take the coordinate from that only x2 uh, sorry like y2 uh, what, what i'm saying wait wait just a second suppose y if you are taking this one as x1 then you should take this one as y1 yeah yeah and that's what i i would know that you're saying yeah. like y1 y2 no 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 sorry sorry actually i got confused because i'm still feeling sleepy so a bit y's and x's okay so this um why so wait let me write a formula i'm just gonna write it on here mm -hmm. hey, i made a straight line yeah that's great um okay so x we need to find y2 so y2 is four yeah correct and then four minus y1 which is two mm -hmm. and then down here here it would be um x two is zero. Mm -hmm. Zero minus uh x one, which is negative one. Correct. And now you are going to calculate, right? Uh, so for it, mm -hmm. so this would equal make a line here. Um two and then so zero plus one is just wait no zero plus one yeah so zero plus is one, one is one one and two upon one is and two upon one is just two so that is our answer isn't it so yeah. again the slope of a line is constant same answer you will get isn't it this line is infinite if you will see this line has no end at all Oh my God, what happened? Uh oh, just a second. No, no, but what I'm confused about is... Uh-huh. Why do people study infinity and stuff when nothing in this universe is infinite? Everything is infinite, isn't it? The universe itself. Oh no, my God, true. what is happening to this? Again, I have everything. Made... Mm -hmm. everything, everything has a specific side. Nothing's infinite. So why do we study, study something that doesn't even exist? Uh, no, I know, no. infinite exists, infinite, because, because we, you know, the human brain has some limitation, we do not know everything, so that is why infinity is there, right, something is there which we cannot comprehend, something is there which is beyond yeah. us, and that it's is beyond also, beyond our existence, yeah, like if a brain saw it, a brain just would explode, wouldn't explode, but like, we can't, it's just too much, just so, like how physics is too much for me, something like that in religion also we are saying like if you define god in hinduism in bhagavad gita you might have heard about bhagavad gita right lord sri krishna in bhagavad gita is saying that i'm eternity i'm non-comprehendable you cannot comprehend me i'm beyond your thinking so that is what infinity is so this is so this line is infinity if i would be keep going on plane. i guess it's just a kind of like a placeholder for something Yes. It's just a placeholder. Yeah, that's true. So I know what it's doing. So this is infinity, isn't it? So if you take mm -hmm. any any two coordinate, like it will go up to two hundred also, then we will be getting the same answer, isn't it? Any two coordinate will give me the same answer. That is two, right? So what yes. we learned right now about slope, we learned that if the distances would be given, right? Then simple formula: rise over run. Suppose if distance is not given to us, if the coordinates are given to us, then how we are going to find the slope? If any two coordinate of a line is given, you can easily find the slope of that line, the complete line you can find. Because the slope of a line is constant, if you are taking any two coordinate on that same line, the slope will be same, right? So what is the formula for that? If two coordinates are given, rise. So rise means y-axis, so y2 minus y1 run means x-axis x2 minus x i wrote that the slope of y-axis is undefined the slope of x-axis is zero the vertical height is called rise and the horizontal height is called run yeah if the distance is given the formula is rise over run if the coordinates are given then we are finding the slope then formula is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 got my point no doubt yeah, what I'm planning to do mm -hmm. is after 
um, when you send me the recording, mm -hmm. I have this notebook, so I'm going to write everything down, all my notes in the notebook. Yes, because grade because seventh, if, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if I'm doing homework, it's hard to just pull up a video and it's better to just have a look in a book. I can, because for some reason, mm -hmm. I learn from like paper, like books and paper. Mm -hmm. Even if it, it, even if like the thing on the computer or the book is the same thing, I still like the book better. Better. Yeah, actually, I also feel because in book, you know, uh, in video, it will take one hour, but in book, you just revise in ten minute and you are done. Yeah, like when I look, I have a history book that's online. Mm -hmm. and the same history book that's on the book and even if the online one is easier to get i keep on getting getting the book and for some reason i understand it better yeah actually that is better because you know some sometimes the eyes have the problem right yeah. when you are too much online on the computer so we have understood everything right now yep. here you need to tell me the slope would be negative positive see one more thing i'm telling you if line would be like this, line would be like this. So isn't it, it is a kind of, you know, like you are climbing on this, right? Oh, I know what to do. The mm. 16 is, um, 16 is undefined. 17 right. is zero. And uh -huh. you just have to get to, um, two points on 15 then calculate the slope. Uh, yes, that is, yeah, that is one way to do, right? The other yeah. way is they are just asking that that would be a positive or negative. So by looking at the line, we can predict that it would be negative or positive. If the line is going like this, if I'm, uh, if I am just acting like a bird, then see this line is going from right hand to left hand, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. How, how this line is going like this, isn't it? From right hand to left hand okay so but, you know, like starting from left hand left to right left to right got my point yeah. so if yeah. something like this would be there something like this then slope yeah. would be positive okay and yeah. something like this would be there now see something like this that's okay negative. yeah that's negative so you just remember the pattern because i myself is very confused with left and right so I just uh, learned the pattern, okay, something, if it is going high in the sky, then this is uh, positive. If something is coming yeah, down. I'm right. I'm right when I, 16 is um undefined. Yeah. And 17 is zero. Yeah, correct. Zero. Correct. And what about 15? And 15 is um negative. Exactly. Very good. Right. So this is what you need to do. So here I'm just in simple uh, symbols I'm writing that what they are. So here, this is negative, this is undefined, and this is zero. What about 18 number? Mm, 18 would be negative. Very good, excellent. And 19 would be undefined. Correct. And 20 would be zero. Correct. And what about 21? 21 is positive. Uh -huh. 20, 22 is positive. Correct. And 23 is negative. Very good. Excellent. So got my point, right? Wait, so wait, I'm confused. What does like TW, um, TVE and negative VE? Oh, okay. So this is plus symbol, right? Mm -hmm. This is V and that's E. Plus? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an mm -hmm. addition symbol. Yeah. So this is a shortcut of writing positive, like positive, positive, like this, yeah, negative. Oh, because it's a V and E, okay. Yeah, like this. It's, so this is positive and positive. negative, right? Yeah. Well, so got I, my point, no doubt? Yeah. So here they're just asking to find the slope. But before that, let us practice some of the question. Okay, let me tell you all the concept. Let us practice the question tomorrow, right? So tomorrow also, can you take the class at the same time? Yeah, I'm free. I have literally okay. no classes besides just class. Uh, and what about in morning, if you will be able to take? Oh, morning is another thing. I, means, I... means morning like 10 a.m., 10.30, like that? Mm, maybe, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. so evening is uh, perfect for me. It's all right. So 6 yeah. p.m. is perfect no, time, morning right? morning might be good, but who knows? I don't know. 
you can talk to my dad for that okay okay no problem so this time is perfect so now what we are going to learn you understood see till now what i have discussed again i am the summing of everything the first thing which i discussed see i am writing here the first thing i discussed if there is coordinate a which is x1 and y1 and if there is coordinate b which is x2 and y2 then how can you find distance between a and b so what is formula for this make a root over like this write yeah. here x2 minus x1 give a whole square like that then put a plus then you write y2 minus y1 whole square got my point what if these two coordinates are given and what if you are supposed to find a midpoint so for finding the midpoint yeah i really wrote it all everything down i wrote those two so things. x1 plus x2 right perfect that's upon two that point. is x you will get x from here right and for finding y you will write y1 plus y2, y2. divided by two from here you will get y right then third thing what we have learned we have learned slope when rise distance rise. is given yeah correct distance is distance. given that is rise and run is given so you are going to write slope is equal to rise yeah over... but it's only when the distance is given yeah right now here slope when coordinates are given coordinates are given so again if the coordinates are given i'm taking like a is given to us that is x1 and y1 and suppose if there is b if that is given to us that is x2 and y2 right then how we are going to find the slope for this situation then slope would be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 got my point no doubt yep no doubt. now the next concept we are going to learn just two more concepts are there okay and we are done with this chapter then when you will uh, go in like grade seventh we are we are completing pre-algebra so in algebra i'll teach you how to find the equation of a line if... oh, we after this chapter we're done with pre-algebra uh, one, one, two more chapters are there. Then we will go to grade seven. So this is also the part of grade seventh. You have to learn, but this is also the part of grade sixth. When coordinate you are learning in grade six as well, right? It's kind of going to a more advanced level. No, right. this is easy, isn't it? Coordinate plane is the easiest chapter yeah. I find. No, no, but what you mean is like it's sixth grade, but it's going to kind of like seventh grade. Yeah, exactly. This is a kind of transition, right? This chapter it's not is hard though. Yeah, this is not tough at all. Everything is logical, right? The next thing is if slope of two lines are equal or same, right? Then lines are parallel. This is very important thing, okay? See, if suppose two lines are given and you came to know, okay, slope of these two lines are equal, same, right? Then those two lines would be equal. For example, I'm taking line L1. Its slope is, its slope is M1. Got my point? I'm taking line L2. When I calculated the slope of line L2, I got M2. Now, if slope of line one that is m1 that is slope of line one if that would be same to slope of line two then two lines would be parallel to one another got my point yep for example this is a very simple thing to comprehend what would be the slope of y axis and that vertical line why you told that here the slope i didn't told you that the slope of this line is undefined isn't it did i told you that yeah you told me that I, I just told to... that slope of y-axis is undefined, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You just thought in your mind, your answer is correct. You just thought in your mind, okay, this line is parallel to y-axis, isn't it? 
So two parallel lines have the same slope. Parallel lines have same slope. So isn't it this line is parallel to y-axis? Yes or no? Yeah. So yeah. two parallel lines have the same slope. I know what is the slope of y-axis that is undefined. This line is parallel to y-axis. That is why its slope is also undefined. Got my point? Here, same way, I didn't told you that what is the slope of this line. I just told slope of x-axis is zero. You just comprehended in your mind that, okay, this is similar to x-axis. That means this is parallel to x-axis. So its slope is also zero. Got my point? Slope of two parallel lines are equal. No doubt, right? For example, how you will see the questions? There they are asking if the lines are parallel, perpendicular or neither. So which lines are parallel in this case? The slope of the lines are given. M means slope. So slope of the lines are given. You need to tell me which lines are parallel to one another. So am I audible? Yeah. So which lines are parallel to one another if their slopes are given? So uh, if the slopes are the, same, the lines are parallel. So the slope is same. But so, how do you know the slope is the same? See here it is given 62 number. The slope of first line is 5. Slope of second line is 5. So both the slopes are same. Isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. So the first one is not... Parallel, you just need to tell me parallel right now. I didn't taught you about perpendicular yet. Okay, what and it's what else not... is parallel? Mm. One more is there, which is parallel. 61? No, no. 61. Because uh... there is a negative sign. 2 upon 7 oh, and wait, negative. Wait, it's, it's 59. Is it 59? Yeah, exactly. Because 4 upon 4 will make 1, isn't it, at the end? Correct, right? So you understood my point. If the slope of two lines are same, then the lines are parallel to one another. Right? Now the last thing of the day which we need to learn is if there is line L1, right? And its slope is M1. If line is L2, its slope is M2. Now, when the product of the slope, product, you understand multiplication. If the product of slope, product of slope is equal to negative one, is equal to negative one, then lines are perpendicular, right? If there is a line like this, and if there is a line perpendicular on it, making a right angle, then if you find the slope of this and this, right? When you multiply them, you will get negative one. Got my point? Right. Yep. So when the product means multiplication of slopes of two different lines, two different lines is equal to equal to negative 1, then lines are perpendicular. So got my point, no doubt, right? Now I'm giving a question. Suppose there is a line M1, okay? Its slope is 3. I'm asking, tell me such a line which would be perpendicular to this line Tell me the slope of it. First of all, if I will ask what would be the slope of the line which is parallel to it. So what will, so you will answer? Three. Three, because the slope of two parallel lines are equal, right? Then how we will find the slope of a line which is perpendicular to it? Suppose you don't know how to find, let it be x. Got my point, right? You know, m1 times m2 will make equal to negative one if the lines are perpendicular. So I'm going to write that I, Already know M1 times M2 should make equal to negative 1. So M1 is 3 and M2 is X is equal to negative 1. Got my point? And what would be my X? X would be equal to this 3 will go in division, isn't it? 
So negative one upon three is my answer. Understood how to solve? Yeah. Hundred percent. See, there is a trick. How I could find? See, what I will do? I will reciprocate this number. Reciprocate. You understand switching numerator and denominator. So what would be reciprocal of three? One upon three. Because what is there in denominator one? You got my point, no doubt. Now put the opposite sign. If this is positive, put it negative. If that would be negative, put it positive. So this is how you can find and you can relate uh, without using this formula by a shortcut. Uh... Again, one more example I'm giving. Suppose if there is two upon seven, okay? Yeah. This is slope number one. What would be the slope of the line which would be perpendicular to this? So first of all, you will reciprocate. You will reciprocate. You should write 7 upon 2, right? And you will put an opposite symbol. This is positive, you will put a negative. Isn't it? If we are multiplying both of them, we will get negative 1, we will get negative 1, right? Yeah. Understood, no doubt? Yeah. Reciprocate and change the sign. Now let us come to the question. Now tell me which lines are perpendicular in this case. Reciprocate, change the sign. If that is the relation, then they are perpendicular, okay? I'm still kind of confused about that part though. Okay, see, let me tell you the example, right? This is negative 2, right? What would be reciprocal of negative 2? Mm. Uh, neg negative mm -hmm. 2? 1 over 2. 1 over 2, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this number is negative. You should uh, need a positive. So, isn't it the same thing M2 is? Reciprocal and then opposite symbol. So, this is perpendicular. Got my point? It's perpendicular because they're equal? No, because if we multiply M2 and M1, what we are going to get? negative one that is why if product is equal to negative one then the lines are perpendicular got my point oh okay yeah product is equal to negative one try to multiply them if you are getting equal to negative one then the lines are perpendicular if you are not getting equal to negative one then the lines are neither if they're equal then parallel you already know about that right so understood my point yep okay so which lines are perpendicular? I have another class right now in a different room, like in a different link. So tell me just this one, then we will conclude. 62? 62, where is 62? 62 is parallel, uh, isn't it? Same. No, I thought you were pointing to 62. No, 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 no. I'm just asking that which are perpendicular? Uh... 57. Mm -hmm. uh, you should get negative 1 after multiplying. So, wait. Uh, 61. But how you are getting negative 1? See here, 2 upon 7 multiplied by negative 2 over 7. So, how you are getting negative 1? You are getting negative 4 upon 7, right? So, they are neither. They are neither parallel nor perpendicular, right? So, you just try this one as your homework, right? You just tell me that which are parallel, which are perpendicular and which are neither. Got my point done? Okay. So, we are concluding here itself. Tomorrow, in tomorrow's class, we will discuss a kind of physics false. Okay, done? So I'll send you this one after another class. Okay, I have one more class. After that, I will send you these. Okay, done? Okay, bye. Bye, take care of yourself. So have a good I'll night. Because I want to make the notes. Yeah, sure, sure. So I'll send you in your uh, yeah, email ID. Okay, okay, sure. So bye, bye. take care of yourself. Bye.